Hey everyone, welcome to Storytime. It's me, Josh. Today we're going to be reading Mr. Grumpy by Roger Hargreaves. Super excited. Being grumpy isn't very nice. But let's find out what Mr. Grumpy's about in now and what lessons we can learn today. Thanks so much for being here. Get comfy. Get ready, as we're about to delve into story time. All right. Thanks so much for reading this story. Let's go. It was a lovely summer evening. Mr. Grumpy was at home, Crosspatch Cottage. He sat down in an armchair and picked up a book. And then, do you know what he did? He tore all the pages out of it, every one. Mr. Grumpy can't stand books. He has a shocking bad temper. In fact, he's quite the most bad tempered person you can imagine. Grumpy by name, and even more grumpy by nature. There he goes, throwing all the pages of the book everywhere, just being all grumpy. Not cool. It's nice to sit and read books. What are we doing right now? Exactly. I'm not going to tear all these and throw them all everywhere just because I'm angry. <laughs> Mr. Grumpy. The following morning, he was out in his garden, pulling up flowers. He couldn't stand pretty flowers growing in the garden. When out of the corner of his eye, he saw a figure. There he goes, pulling out the flowers. All grumpy-like. It was Mr. Happy. Oh, what a perfect combination. Hopefully Mr. Happy can make Mr. Grumpy feel a little bit less grumpy, or even happy. Good morning, said Mr. Happy. Good, said Mr. Grumpy. What's good about it? But, said Mr. Happy. But nothing, went on Mr. Grumpy. Get out of my garden. I beg your pardon, said Mr. Happy. You heard me, snapped Mr. Grumpy. Go away. I say, laughed Mr. Happy. You are a bad-tempered fellow. Humph. <laughs> grunted Mr. Grumpy, and went on Mr. Happy, bad-tempered fellows need to change their ways. That's right. It's him yelling at Mr. Happy for no reason whatsoever. Rubbish, retorted Mr. Grumpy, and went into his cottage deliberately stepping on Mr. Happy's foot as he passed him. Ouch, said Mr. Happy. Bang, went the door of Crosspatch Cottage as Mr. Grumpy slammed it behind him. Not, not cool. Just stomped on Mr. Happy's foot. Look, Mr. Happy's hurt. It's like, ow. Mr. Happy stood there, looking not quite as happy as he normally does. His foot hurt. He thought, and thought, and thought some more. Then he had an idea. He smiled and went to see Mr. Tickle. There he goes, on a walk. That could be a clever idea. Make Mr. Grumpy laugh. Mr. Happy told Mr. Tickle of his idea of how to get Mr. Grumpy to change his ways. And Mr. Tickle grinned. This sort of grin that goes from ear to ear. Mr. Tickle's like, hmm, hmm. <laughs> that's all he likes to do. He's just tickle and make people laugh. So he's in a good spot. Get Mr. Grumpy less grumpy and laughing and happy. That is, if you have ears, which he doesn't. Oh, he grinned, rubbing the hands at the end of those extraordinary long arms together. That sounds fun. <laughs> the best job for him. It's like, <laughs> here we go. That afternoon, Mr. Grumpy went to town shopping. He walked into Mr. Meat's shop. Mr. Meat was a butcher. Give me some sausages, snapped Mr. Grumpy, and be quick about it. Poor Mr. Meat, who was frightened of Mr. Grumpy, did as he was told. But as he was doing, as he was told, something appeared through his shop doorway. Do you know what it was? Oh, you can see in the back there, a little orange hand. It was an extraordinarily long arm belonging to, well, you can guess who it belonged to, can't you? The extraordinarily long arm of Mr. Tickles came in through the door and across the shop and up to Mr. Grumpy and tickled him. Oh, squeaked Mr. Grumpy in alarm, dropping his sausages and looking round to see what had happened. But could he see anything? He could not. It's a long, extraordinarily long arm, as they call it, of Mr. Tickle. Humph, grunted Mr. Grumpy, must, Mr. Grumpy, sorry, and picked up his sausages and went next door to the cake shop. Crash! went the door of the shop. It's Mr. Grumpy. 
crashes his way through the door. Give me a cake, snapped Mr. Grumpy, and hurry up. So rude, isn't he? Yeah. Poor old Mrs. Fairy who sold cakes was frightened of Mr. Grumpy, so did as she was told. But as she was doing, as she was told, guess what happened? Oh, squeaked Mr. Grumpy, dropping his cake and his sausages. He just could not understand what was happening. So he's been tickled again and dropped everything. Doesn't deserve to have any meat or cake or anything if he asks people for it like that. Very rude. And the same thing happened at Mr. Daly's, the newspaper shop, and at Mrs. Humbug's, the sweet shop, and at Mr. Bottle's dairy, and at Mr. Packett's, the grocer's, the grocer's. It went on all afternoon. Mr. Grumpy dropping all of his stuff. And look, there's a sneaky little Mr. Tickle hand in the corner there. Wrecking havoc. And all afternoon, Mr. Grumpy kept being tickled and dropping his shopping and picking it up and being tickled and dropping his shopping and picking it up and being tickled and dropping his shopping and he just could not understand it. And there he's like, hmm. And on his way home to Crosspatch Cottage, he met Mr. Happy again. Hello, grinned Mr. Happy. Having a nice day? Get out of my way, snapped Mr. Grumpy, before I kick you. But almost before the words had passed his lips, that extraordinarily long arm of Mr. Tickles had appeared from behind a tree and tickled him yet again. He jumped in the air and dropped all his shopping yet again and fell over. Mr. Happy looked at Mr. Grumpy, lying amid a jumble of sausages and cake and newspapers and sweets and milk and cornflakes. I think, he laughed, that if you were to change your ways and be not quite so bad-tempered quite so often, this sort of thing might not happen to you quite so often. Humph, <laughs> grunted Mr. Grumpy. He picked up all his shopping yet again and went home to Crosspatch Cottage. But on his way, he did think about what Mr. Happy had said, because he definitely did not like what had happened to him that afternoon. Mr. Happy and Mr. Tickle laughed and shook hands. <laughs> And so after that, Mr. Grumpy did try to be not quite so bad-tempered quite so often. And he, the more he tried, the less he found he was tickled. And so he tried more and more, and these days, he's quite a changed person. Why, only the other evening he picked up a book, and do you know what? Book in his hand there, looking happy in bed there. Let's see. He only tore out one page. Still, shouldn't tear out any pages. But that's better than ripping all of the pages out of the book like he did earlier, hey? <laughs> Alright, thanks so much for reading the story today. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll be back again with another story really soon. If you like these, please subscribe. Bye for now, but not forever.